We all know what this is. The second Crimes of Grindelwald trailer from San Diego. I thought I wouldn't get to do this reaction today, but luckily I do get to and I'm so excited. So I'm not even going to like talk too much now. Let's just get into this. I cannot wait. I'm scared, Professor Dumbledore. Everyone is scared of something. Ridiculous. Oh wow. Mute? You're up next. Oh look at little, little, look look at young Newt. What Mr. Scamander fears above everything else is having to work in an office, sir. <laughs> <Go> <laughs> ahead, Newt. I agree. I feel like a Newt. Ridiculous. Magic blooms. Oh, Lonely. that's pretty yes. cool. Oh. That must be Paris. Still, we must skulk in shadows. The new major again. But the old ways serve us no longer. There's Johnny. I take it. You've heard the rumors. Grindelwald had a vision that he would rise to dominance over the wizarding world. So you're asking me to help hunt him down? Oh my gosh, those things are really creepy. I can't move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. It has to be you. I'd probably refuse to. It's late. Good evening, Newt. <laughs> oh, come on. Wow. Oh, come on. <laughs> you underestimate your talents, Mr. Scamander. The arrogance is a key to our victory. Muggles are not lesser. Disposable. Whoa. You're too good, Newt. You never met a monster you couldn't love. Wow. That English accent is really good. Do you think Dumbledore will mourn for you? I'm alive, but I'm an alchemist and therefore immortal. Oh, Nicolas Flamel. <laughs> Jacob Kowalski. Oh. oh, you don't look a day over 375. <laughs> you don't look a day over 375. <laughs> so far, it looks really good. I love Nicolas Flamel, like, he was great. I love Jacob's response to him. But Queenie looks really troubled. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the Queenie situation. I, I really hope it's not what I think it is, but it could be. I really don't think it's going to be good for her. But um, uh, Zoe Kravitz does such a good English accent. I almost forgot she was American for a second and that she was like Lenny Kravitz's daughter. It looks really good. I liked hearing Grindelwald talk some more, or Grindelwald, or however you want to say it. I will have more uh, things to say when I get to watch this a few more times and make up some little things, uh, my thoughts on it, because, you know, I'm a bit, like, have to have the time, but it looks really cool, and I'm just, oh, yes, November, please come soon, sooner. It's July now, we have three months, so... Three or four months. We haven't got long. I'm really happy that I saw this today and it was really great. Yeah, Nicolas Flamel all the way. Nicolas Flamel. <laughs> One, three. 
Hello everyone, I have just reacted to the Crimes of Grindelwald. Well, actually, not just, I reacted like two days ago. But um, it's the San Diego trailer that has just come out. And although there are new things in it, there are a lot that's kind of similar. So there's not going to be too much new stuff to say, but I do have some new thoughts on this. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe if you want more Harry Potter videos. I do them constantly, it's my thing. And welcome back if you aren't new here. So let's get into this review of this trailer. So the first thing we see in this trailer, pretty much, is Dumbledore teaching the classic Remus Lupin Boggart class. So for sure now we know, Jude Law has said in an Entertainment Weekly um, interview that Dumbledore is not a Transfiguration teacher at this time. I remember I did have sign of I was confused about why he was teaching DADA or why he appeared to be in a DADA classroom, but now we know that he teaches Defense Against Dark Arts at this time. And we see young Newt Scamander, which is really fun to see, and his boggart is a writing desk. Nothing too scary, right? But I feel you, Newt, because I don't want to work in an office job for the rest of my life either. That's a, it's a, it's a legitimate fear. Um, if we look closely, we can circle her, probably, but I think this girl right there is Lita Lestrange, or Lestrange, I, you know, I say Lestrange, but it looks like she's a Slytherin, so that's cool. I mean, I thought maybe she'd be a Hufflepuff to make it a bit more <gasps> shock horror, but it looks like she's a typical Slytherin Lestrange, Lestrange. And that's cool. I mean, it would be cool to see a Hufflepuff and a Slytherin be friends. So I'm excited about that. Very interesting to see. And I love the homage to Rufus Lupin with the whole Boggart class. Next up, we see floating Grindelwald. The Makusa are, I assume, taking him to his cell. It doesn't look very comfortable for him. But it doesn't seem like he's going to be staying in there for very long, to be honest, because that would be a pretty boring film if Grindelwald just stayed locked up the whole time. So I don't think he's going to be in there very long. We know he's not going to be in there for very long. And that's really what I have to say about that part. It just seemed very uncomfortable. He was literally, like, hanging like this. Like, that is uncomfortable. <laughs> Next we see Grindelwald's speech, which it's nice to hear it. And parts of it are actually really interesting because what he's saying about no longer wanting to skulk in the darkness because they do have a rare talent that and a rare gift that no, not many people have and I understand that he doesn't want to have to hide it and it's true it's a bit like an X-Men complex thing like we shouldn't have to hide our abilities because muggles are scared you know it's true, and there is always a little grain of truth in anything that Grindelwald says, and that's why it's so interesting to see how he can easily manipulate people, because there's always a bit of truth with what he says, and I cannot wait to see that more. Especially since Johnny Depp turned up at San Diego Comic-Con in full Grindelwald gear, and quoted a bit of the speech, which was very interesting. It seems as though, in one scene, Grindelwald is having visions. So I don't know if I've actually said about this before, but I reckon that he is a seer. He'll be the first, I mean, technically the second legitimate seer we meet in the Harry Potter or Fantastic Beasts Wizarding World. Because, I mean, Trelawney is a seer. She actually is, but most of the time she's false and, you know, she's a fraud. But Grindelwald, it seems to be that he is a seer and he is seeing a vision of Credence and he has a vision of what the future will be in the wizarding world so it seems as though realistically he might be seeing something about the fate of one and the future of all you know as it says at the end i wonder who the one is i wonder if it's him it could be it could be newt i don't think it is it could be bunty for all we know who by the way needs to be in this more i was Kind of hoping to see Bunty. I was, I was really hoping to see Bunty, to see what what exactly she does, who she is. But maybe she's not too. Um, maybe she's like an ancillary character that's not really in it. Probably she's just on the 
on the sidelines, but it would have been nice to see her a little bit more. Next we see these cats with Perinelle, the wife of Nicholas Flamel. These cats look like sphinxes. They have really big blue eyes. They really creeped me out the first time I saw them. It seems like they're attacking. Like they look like they're about to attack. So Perinelle's probably like, you know, going on some kind of cool mission at the French Ministry of Magic, maybe? Who knows? But I think the CGI is a bit dodgy on those cats, to be honest. And I hope that we might get some more information about them. Maybe there'll be another new edition of Fantastic Beasts. I kind of hope not, though, because they keep making new editions of it, and then that's just more money to spend <laughs> on Harry Potter. Thanks, Joe Rowling. Thank you very much. Okay, one of the biggest things that everyone's been talking about with this trailer is as Dumbledore is saying I can't move against Grindelwald or Grindelwald, you know a brief image of Dumbledore looking into the mirror of Erised appears and in the mirror of Erised he sees Grindelwald he sees Grindelwald and that was very interesting because we kind of assume when when Dumbledore tells Harry that he sees himself holding a pair of swollen socks um, when in the Philosopher's Stone, we just kind of assume that's not what it is, he's not telling the truth. And we assume that we infer it from the Deathly Hallows when we find out about Ariana, Dumbledore and Aberforth. I think most people assume that he sees himself with his parents and his sister again and his brother all reunited but apparently at this point in time he sees Grindelwald and I think that's a hint at their relationship so we know we're not going to see a lot about this relationship in this film because they don't even share any scenes together as Jude Law has pointed out but it doesn't mean that there's any less of a relationship between the two so it'll be very interesting to see that. Also where is the mirror? Is it at Hogwarts? Because I don't know, did the mirror stay at Hogwarts for all these years? Was it there since 1920s? Or is it possibly in France? We don't know where the mirror is. It would be interesting to see where it is. I think it might be with Nicholas Flamel. So watch this space and see if I'm correct on that theory. Um, we keep seeing this whole Lita, Newt and Tina situation. When Lita says, you've never met a monster you couldn't love, I'm just thinking, it's not about the beasts. It's about you, isn't it, Lita? I feel like maybe there's still some feelings there on her part and maybe on Newt's part. And it seems like she, Newt, and Tina are going to have to work together at some point. We see it in the trailer. And I'm just like, poor Tina. Does she think she can't compete? Because Tina's not very, you know, secure in herself. Newt. It doesn't seem Newt knew about Theseus and Lita, and I just think it's going to get very complicated, and I'm ready for it. But I'm very sad for Tina right now, because I think it's going to get very emotionally tense. Speaking of emotionally tense, Queenie, she just looks so off right now, and I'm just, I'm just worried about her. Because if anyone's going to go to Grindelwald's side, I feel like it's Queenie. She has all the motivation to. The laws, current laws in America, are the reason she and Jacob can't be together. If he can just twist it so that it appeals to her sensibilities, it's very easy to get her involved on his side. Plus, she's like the only naturally born legitimates we know about in the whole of Harry Potter law so she's clearly powerful probably more of a powerful legitimate than he is so it would make sense that he'd want her on his side am i getting off track a little probably next we see vinda rosier grindelwald and we're assuming this is the battle with theseus and newt um i think it's cool that newt and theseus are going to be working together on this but in the background, when Vinda Rosier is behind Grindelwald, you can see that she has a prophecy ball in her hands. I really am thinking at this point that this prophecy might have something to do with Newt. I don't really know why she's always following 
uh, Grindelwald around. Maybe she's like his right hand woman. But it's really weird that this prophecy ball is always prominent. Like we saw Grindelwald holding one in the first trailer, and I just think this is probably. I think it might be to do with credence, to be honest. Um, but who knows? Give me your theories. Let me know your comments and theories on who this prophecy is about because I think everybody wants to know. Of course, the biggest thing probably... <sighs> Grindelwald has the Elder Wand. Already! I wasn't expecting that. It's only 1927 at this point as far as I know. And he has the Elder Wand already so he must have maybe got it whilst he was in prison because he didn't have it in the first film. Maybe we'll see how he acquired the Elder Wand, but that means he's had, the, by the time Dumbledore defeats him, he will have had the Elder Wand for like two decades. That's kind of scary. I mean, the power that he must have accumulated over those years is terrifying. Anyway, I think that's all I really have to say about this. My thoughts aren't probably that original. I've tried to come up with things in my head but this trailer as the, although it does have a few new things in it it's very it's not too much to go on I don't think maybe other people have found other things but for me that's what I found and I just wish there was more modesty I want to know what happened to modesty barebone please put it somewhere in the series if it's not in this film in one of the others but I need to know what happened to her I, I just I care so much for that little girl <laughs> anyway that's all from me if you enjoyed it don't forget to give it a thumbs up tell me all your theories I want to know all of them and I'll see you next time don't forget to subscribe if you liked it thank you for watching and goodbye my friends